Another cool Pee Wee Creighton lick comes from the instrumental After Hours, and this is one where he does a number of verses, but there's one verse I really like where he's getting ready to go to the five, and he does this little slide thing on the third string. It goes like this. And then he goes into the... That takes you into the five, and then he does this little bass drum. And so what he's doing, from what I hear, he's starting on the fifth, fifth fret of the fifth string, which is your D, or your five, if the song is in the key of G. And he's just going from the fourth fret, fifth, sixth, seventh, on the third string. And to back to the D on the fifth fret of the fifth string. And then he does this. So this is on, uh, put your first finger on the 5th fret of the 5th string, hammer on to the 7th fret of the 5th string, 5th fret of the 4th string, and I'm sliding from the 7th to 8th fret on the 4th string, coming back, and I'm walking in from the 5th fret of the 5th string to the 4th fret of the 4th string to the 5th fret. That little back. So the whole thing. And then he does this. I'm going from, from the 6th fret to the 7th fret of the 6th string to the 5th fret of the 5th string and then walking back down or up from the 5th, 4th, 3rd, on the 5th string, and just, just a little single string run like that. So the whole thing, and wraps up the verse. I always like this. Play, he just kind of does it like that. You could also play that way up here on the around the 10th fret D, but I think he's doing it here when he's playing it. Next lick, this is number 14 on, on the tablature. There's a, a tune where, um, oh, I can't remember the name of the tune, but where Pee Wee plays a melody line that you hear in a T-Bone Walker tune. I think it's T-Bone Shuffle. And this is kind of a cool little melody that you can throw into a, a swing song or a shuffle or whatever you want to do. It goes like this. and he just plays the first part of that. And it goes into something else. So this little melody line, starting from the fifth fret of the fourth string, and then three and four on the third string. And he does that again. Then to the third fret of the second string, to the fifth fret of the fourth string, and then back to that three to four on the third string, and into that again. And then when he gets to the four, he's just going to get the third fret of the third string and play it twice instead of this. He's just going to do this. that. You can mess around with that all you want, but that's it's similar to this. That one. Similar.
similar to something like that. Pee Wee Creighton uses those kind of little melody runs in the middle of a song. Now we're going to go to a tune oh. called Texas Hop and something else that Pee Wee Creighton does. We're going to go to the key of B. So when he gets to the five, oftentimes they'll do something like this. This little... That little leg. This. So from B, I've got my first finger. If I'm in a B chord, my first finger is on the... Well, I can use my second or my first. Let's use the second finger on the eighth fret of the third string. And we're just going back and forth, nine, eight, nine, eight. And then to the seventh fret of the second string. That little lick. He does all kinds of things after that. I tabbed out one specific example for you. So when he gets to the five, he does this. And then into some other lick to wrap out the, the verse. So this, that lick is another one that you hear Pee Wee Creighton use. Lick number 16 like comes from a tune called uh, The Telephone is Ringing. This is in a C sharp. It's probably in, in C or D, but the way my tuning is, this is what it plays out to. So I'm going to do the example in C sharp. <laughs> And in this tune, he gets into the second blues box, which will be on the second, first and second strings between the 12th and 14th frets. And he does this, this lick where you know, he starts out playing, doing these typical bands. And then he does this. And he goes really up on the neck, the high notes. So he starts out. Going from the 14th fret to the 12th fret, 14th fret of the 2nd string, 12th fret of the 1st string, 14th fret of the 1st string. And then he slides to the 16th fret. And he does that little... And then slides it. Just slides his hand off the fretboard. Then he comes back to the 21st fret. And it sounds to me like he's going even all the way, you know, over the, the pickups here to get off of it. That's tough to do. And let me try that again. I can't even do it. It's hard. You could go back the other way. Something like that. There you go. You got to keep that finger on the string. And so using those high notes, he does that in a couple different songs. So let me do that real slowly one time. He does that, something along those lines. So if you're playing here, find your second position blues box. That's the first one. We're going to do that and then... All the way up to the 21st fret. That's pretty pretty far up the neck there. I've got a strat, so I've got, got that fretboard space here. But the idea of using those single string kind of high notes with the staccato picking, that's something else that you hear Pee Wee Creighton do in a number of songs. So that lick again, C sharp, second position blues box, 14th fret, second string, 12, 14 on the first string to the 16th fret of the 1st string and then to the 21st. Like that. Now one of my favorites comes from a tune called Huckle Boogie. We're in the key of B flat now. And this is another kind of jazzy lick that he does. And it's just pretty simple like this. And what he's doing, this is a B flat. This is a B flat or a B flat nine with my ring finger at the 13th fret of the first string. So there's the, that's my end point. So I'm going to start from the 10th fret of the first string and just go 10, 11, 12, 13. Like that. So 
if I know where my second position ninth chord is, so if I'm playing in G, here it is, I'm just going to end that up on that fret. So for the second position G, it's going to be the tenth fret. So that's in G. If I'm in A, here's my second position A9. That's how you find that lick if you need it. It's really kind of based on a on this D-shaped chord. So if we're in B flat, this is B flat too. And this is a place for a lot of jazz players and country players play melodies. And so we're just using the first string and playing that lick. So that's the 17th. Now, number 18, we're going to go back to the tune, My Telephone is Ringing. And this is a typical electric blues type thing that Pee Wee uses. And he says, and that's one of the things I like about Pee Wee is how he does these bends. This kind of leaves him hanging and does these little flurries. You know, on top of it. So the lick itself... This is a very common electric blues lick. I'm playing in C sharp, so I'm going to bend up on the 11th fret of the 3rd string. And I've got my 1st finger anchored at the 9th fret on the 2nd and 1st string. So I'm bending the 3rd string, 2nd string, 1st string. Then going to the 12th fret of the 2nd string, 9th fret. And then going back to that bend on the 3rd string. So this whole lick... Something like that. You can do all kinds of things with that. From there, but this. Another lick that Pee Wee Creighton uses quite a bit. If you listen to the tune, My Telephone is Ringing, he uses that over and over again. Now, a couple of ideas, or one more idea that this is kind of a, a trick that Pee Wee Creighton uses quite a bit. He does these what I call slurs, where he takes his finger, and let's say we're in the key of E, this is from a tune called Central Avenue, and he'll do this, where he'll slur the finger within the fret. So this is the 14th fret of the 4th string, which is an E, and he'll, he'll do that kind of thing. In G, he'd do it on the 5th fret of the 4th string. That's just something he does. A lot of times he'll do these licks like this. Something like that. So let's do that whole that whole lick there. So we'll go to the key of G. I'm having a hand cramp right now. My thumb is cramping up on me for some reason. But anyway, he'll do this. So this lick, you've got to take your, maybe it's easier with your second finger, and just slide it back and forth within the same fret. And Pee Wee does this quite a bit. So the whole lick, he's going to slide to the seventh fret, fifth fret, third fret on the third string. Wind up on the fifth fret of the fifth string. Walk in back to the wand, and then... And sometimes it sounds like he just goes to the 4th fret of the 3rd string and slides it away. In Central Avenue, when he's playing in E, he does this. Sounds like he's just picking the note and then sliding it up or down. So that's a Pee Wee Creighton thing. At the end of a verse, he'll do the slur and then wrap it up. This time I'm hammering on from the third to the fourth fret on the third string, and then sliding it. Like that. So that slur. And then context. Here's an example of how he uses that in context. Something like that at the end of a, of a verse. But that takes some practice. That's something I'm trying to get good at. Being able to play those slurs. One of the I have for you is a, a pattern he plays in, a, in the solo of a tune called Walking and Crying. 
this is really cool. He does these single string inter, uh, lead in runs and then double stops and winds up with this wild staccato thing on the first string. Let me play the whole thing through. This is the beginning of his solo on Walking and Crying. <laughs> is really neat. So he starts out walking into it on the bass strings, fifth fret of the fifth string, second fret of the fourth string, fifth fret of the fourth string. And then this double stop in G, sliding in from one step below to the third fret of the second string and the fourth fret of the third string. And then when he walks to the four, instead of starting on the fifth fret, he's starting on the third fret of the fifth string. Same thing, 2nd fret, 5th fret on the 4th string. Now he's playing the 4 chord, which just is, this is like a C9, but I'm just getting the 2nd and 3rd strings at the 3rd fret. Then that same walk in. And he's going to slide to the 15th fret of the 1st string. And then slide it off the fretboard, sliding it up. So the whole thing, one more time. Like that. That's really cool stuff. There's quite a few tunes, and I don't have all of this tabbed out, but there's one where he starts out like this... Uh, Position. So playing that for the one and then that for the four. He does that in a couple of different songs. This is, top. this is back in the key of B. And he's got this little vamping thing that he does in quite a few songs. He's done playing a solo or finishes a solo and then the piano or the horns plays and he does this in the background. First finger on the seventh fret of the first and second string. Now I'm doing this double stop, a shorty, shortened version of this. We're just using those two strings. Pinky on the tenth fret of the first string, second a ring finger on the ninth fret of the second string. I'm just bouncing back and forth. So And he goes to the four. And I can throw in the third string there at the ninth fret or the seventh fret to get the, the four chord, which would be that ninth, an E9. And then back to the one. Then when he goes to the four, he does this, or the five. He hits that ninth, which would be a F sharp ninth here. At least gets part of it, maybe just the top three strings. Sometimes he does it twice over two verses. But that's a little vamping thing he does behind other instruments. And he mixes that up, uses different strumming and different rhythms. I'll show an idea here for look number 22. And this is something that uh, Pee Wee does in a couple different tunes where he plays over the ninth. There's a tune called Central Avenue where it's in the key of E and he gets over the five and he does something like this or he does this. And he's playing over a ninth shape. So really cool little thing. So if I play it in E this would be a B ninth, and I'm going to just follow the notes in that. Starting with the 14th fret of the 5th string, to the 13th fret of the 3rd, 4th string, to the 16th fret of the 4th string. And he kind of 
rakes over the 14th frets of the 2nd and 3rd strings to the 16th fret of the 1st string. That kind of thing. And then winds up on the 16th fret of the 3rd string. So this... He goes into the rest of the solo. But when he gets to the 5... There's another tune. He does this quite a bit where he plays over that ninth shape in the key of G, a tune called Bounce Peewee, where he does this solo intro. He, he starts out with the hops. He does a... I don't know if he starts on, on the C, on the fifth. I think he just starts from the third string or the fourth string at the second fret. Does this little walking pattern, which is really just over the C9. This is another Charlie Christian idea. And he mutes the strings and kind of plays a choppy little thing over that. So once again, let me play it slowly. G, and the song goes to the 5, over the 4, there's just one example, and the two that I showed you, the one from Central Avenue, and the one from Bounce Pee Wee, I'm not sure exactly what he's playing on that one yet, but it's something over that ninth chord. So if you get your ninth chord shape, second position ninth chord shape, any note that's in there you can play. And sometimes you do this. All kinds of stuff. So if you hear something like that in a Pee Wee Creighton song, chances are he's playing over that ninth chord. And that's an idea that he, he uses quite a bit. Next lick, number 24, comes from a tune called Papa Stoppa. And this is one that's really kind of different that he does. And this is a lick you can use in, in a solo. He uses it at the start of his solo, one of his solos in this tune. And it goes like this. And that little descending rhyme. So he's starting out with a double stop on the 8th fret, 2nd and 3rd strings. Going to the ninth fret or the tenth fret of the third string, back to that double stop, then the double stop, twice on the tenth fret of the fourth string. So the whole thing, and then eighth fret of the fourth string, twice on the tenth fret. So the whole lick. Song. So that's another Pee Wee Creighton idea that I like. Last so like in the key of C, this is another one, kind of a Charlie Christian idea. He does something like this, and I can't remember what song this is from. It's in the key of C. It's one of his instrumentals, but he does this. So he's... like that. I can't remember the lick exactly, but it involves that little lick. This same little lick that we used in the Charlie Christian type thing when we did this. But now we're just doing that. And we're starting from the 8th fret of the 3rd string, ninth fret. You could slide into that too. Like that, but I think on this he's doing to the 8th fret of the 2nd string. So when he gets to the 2nd string, he's just going 11 and 10 instead of going to the 8th. And he's going 
10th fret of the third string, 8, 9, 8th fret of the second string. So that lick one more time. You can do lots of other things from there, but this. That was kind of a cool, cool thing to throw in in a solo or even as a fill. Now I've gone through 25 different Pee Wee Creighton licks. Some of them I haven't played too well because I'm just learning them myself. But those are all great ideas. And from those 25, I'm sure you can find some that you can use. Some of them, you know, the real common ones like these hops, you know, those you can use anytime, anywhere. And some of the more unique things that he does, like playing over the ninth chord. You know, that's a, a neat idea that you can also use in a lot of different ways. Slow songs, fast songs, all kinds of stuff. I've gone through this stuff. I hope this, this helps you. I hope you find this interesting. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. And that concludes my Classic Licks videos for Pee Wee Creighton, which is for the month of, which are for the month of months of March and April. And I'm still going to do a complete lesson for Pee Wee's instrumental, Bounce Pee Wee, and I'll have that up pretty soon. And I'll be back again in a couple months with another look at one of the great electric blues guitar players. I haven't decided who I'm going to do next. I'll post that on my, on my website as soon as I figure it out. See you again soon.